like to make your presentation. Yeah, if, if you maybe what I could do is just walk through that because I might yeah. get some ideas going. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we budget. could take it just maybe as a framework. It's very short, um, and I won't. Um, yeah, okay, flip flip away. Um, so uh, I guess I can see it over there. So. You know, a lot of time it's kind of interesting the the whole fundraising process. And before I I was on what I call the dark side, being the investor, I was on um, the the side with the light. I was the entrepreneur. So I I, uh, I worked my quick background. I uh, I joined a company out of college uh, in 1986 called EMC, which many of you may know today. It's a it was a bootstrap company. Um, there was about 80 employees when I joined, um, and I joined. I'm not an engineer like many of you here. Uh, and at EMC, you were either an engineer or a salesperson. There was nothing else. Uh, Dick uh, and Roger, the E and the M, didn't. They either you built the product or you sold it. And the sale, we had no service, so the sales guy was the service person as well. And uh, I started uh, as a telesalesman, um, and we were uh, with the headset on, and we were uh, selling memory boards uh, for Wang VS systems, which were often used in word processing, like law firms and banks, or for digital VAC systems. Uh, which were used by places like Lockheed, uh, not too far from here. And uh, the company um, had a cult, because it was bootstrapped, had a very uh, frugal culture uh, and a, an awesome culture, um, in just in terms of you know, all around the customer and uh, around sort of continual growth. And that was a great company, it still is a great company. But I spent 10 years there, so I joined with about 80 people. When I left, there was 10,000 people, and now there's like 40,000 people. So uh, better lucky than good, I think, um, because I, I didn't know what a memory board was uh, when I joined in 1986. But, uh, and then I, uh, I started a company in the cloud computing space called Storage Networks. Um, I, I took public. Uh, uh, I started that with a friend of mine who was an engineer, and uh, uh, we were venture-backed, and then we took that public. And then uh, I started really investing uh, my own capital, doing seed investments, and then joined Highland, which is a larger venture fund, about uh, five or six years ago. So that's just so I've been on kind of both sides. But I just kind of was thinking about when I when I was raising money, and I taught, and I and I spend I I meet a lot of entrepreneurs each week. Um, that's what I spend most of my time doing. You know, I probably meet probably have one, meetings with 25 entrepreneurs a week. So I spend a lot of time talking to entrepreneurs. Uh, which is a, a fun, it's fun to do. Um, but it's sort of, you know, entrepreneurs want to get there. When they come into our office, um, they want to move quick, right? They want to, they got, they got to build their product or grow their company. They got to hire, right? They want to move quick. They don't want to waste time. But we as the investor, you know, want to make sure we're finding the right partner and as does the entrepreneur, right? So it's, uh, it's kind of this unique uh, dance. Right? You're trying to find a lifelong partner, and if you look at the venture, if you decide to raise venture, and we could talk about the pros and cons of doing that, because there are pros and cons, the average time to liquidity is 8.9 years. Right? So essentially, if you decide to raise venture money, you're picking a partner for the next nine years, which is a long time, and some of you guys have probably raised venture, and, um, and unlike an employee, that if they don't work out because there's not a fit, or they can't do the job as promised, you can sever that relationship. Um, you can actually, it's pretty much impossible to sever the relationship. So it's kind of interesting, you wanna move really quick, but you wanna find this partner you know, on both sides. So that's kind of a, and maybe we can come, uh, come back uh, to that. Um, often, m most entrepreneurs, they want minimal dilution. You, are you familiar with that term? In other words, they don't wanna sell much of their company. Which is totally understandable because this is their, this is their dream, as Yuri said, right? So they they don't want dilution because they're going to work really hard for a long time, um, but they want the right partner. Well, for the partner to come in, they want to own a lot of the company if they like the company because they want to make money. So it's this interesting uh, dance as well in terms of the whole valuation discussion, which is really what it comes down to, which we can uh, chat about. And then, so I thought this would spur some conversation later on. Um, and then there's this whole, uh, as you build syndicates, are you guys familiar with that term? Where you might have two firms or three firms, or what we see now is many companies are have, uh, they're looking, at, there's, there's angels involved. Um, uh, you know, when we invested uh, uh, in uh, Yuri's company, we did it with another firm. So it was two firms, and we kind of had the syndicate. But often, the entrepreneur doesn't, you know, there might be five or six firms looking at their company. Right, and it's kind of a dance because you don't want to 
sort of uh, bring two firms together because you don't, if one pulls out, you lo lo might lose the other one. So there's this sort of interesting, um, you know, kind of dance that goes on in terms of the entrepreneur want to maximize their options, you know, the number of term sheets or deals or proposals they get. Um, at the same time, they want to control the process. And it's a very unique and, um, and each, uh, uh, each deal environment is different. I mean, you guys, right? I mean, oh, yeah, if we can talk about it, it's each, it's sort of a, there's sort of a story around, around each, uh, each deal. So I'd say just sort of one of the takeaways um, is I think as you, if you decide to go through the venture funding process, um, that it's, it's very much not straightforward. Um, and there's really no textbook on it, um, which makes it kind of an interesting journey, um, uh, but uh, you know, one that I think um, often people have a lot of questions when I meet entrepreneurs, so you can flip the slide. Um, so, um, you know, one p thing people tell me is, hey, you know, I want to, you know, I want to raise the money, I want to build my business, I want to get it done, but next slide. Um, but as uh, many entrepreneurs, you know, the um, one reason you'll surely go out of business is if you're out of cash, right? That's, that's a true statement. I don't care what kind of business you're building, right? Now, if you're, if you're self-funded or you've got customers funding you, which is how we did it at EMC, right? We, uh, the founders were unsuccessful. They tried, they, uh, the company was started in Boston. They pitched every venture firm in Boston and every venture firm out here in the Valley, and they were unsuccessful raising venture money. So they funded it through building a really good product and, and you know, getting customer growth. But I, I think one of the things I'd say to the entrepreneurs, and Yuri knows this, is that raising money is part of your job. It's not a one-time event, because many companies, depending on what you're doing, you may need multiple rounds of financing. Some companies, um, and there's some great ones here tonight, they don't need venture money, and that's fine. But many companies, and many of the companies that we all think of are great companies today, many of them have raised venture money or multiple rounds of venture money. Um, so I, I think if you decide to go down that route, you have to realize as the entrepreneur that raising money is uh, it's part of your job. Um, and it's, uh, you know, like I said earlier, is, is a process. Uh, so, um, and this maybe we can lead it to questions, but these are the questions I always get uh, from entrepreneurs is, um, how do you get in? Right, because you can imagine for a venture firm um, who, that's what we do for a living, we get a lot of business plans. I mean, I, I, I can't tell, the number is daunting how many we get, you know, unsolicited. I, I know, and I, we have 13 partners, so I, I can't even, you know, fathom how many we get, but it's in the thousands each year. And we're one of the most active venture firms. If you look at sort of number of deals, we're one of the most active over the last 10 year period. And we invest about 12 to 14 new deals a year, right? So you, that means each partner is doing about one deal a year. And, and then we have associates and analysts. So the number of the funnel is huge. And most, you just don't have time to even look at. So the, the best deals come in through a referral. And the best referrals are someone in the network, right? Is, is another, like if Yuri called me, and said, hey, I have a friend that I used to work with that's starting a company. That's the best intro we can get, right? Someone in our, one of our entrepreneurs calling us and saying, I've got a friend starting a company and th that I believe in, right? Those, th those are the ones we drop everything for. Um, and those are often the best deals. I mean, when we track this, we track every deal, how it's sourced, you know, from, you know, from sort of the first interaction all the way through the exit. Uh, we, we track, and uh, so I think that's the best way to get in. We can talk about that if you want other questions. Um, then who, who should you meet? Because many of these firms, you, 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 again, you want to move at the right pace, and m most of the companies you guys are starting are actually really interesting. So you can have a lot of meetings that are really interesting, but you're trying to raise money. So you want to not only, not only get to the right firm for your business, but you get to the right partner. So, you know, if you're going to, if you're starting uh, something in mobile, there's a certain group of folks in my organization that would look at that. Um, and then there's a certain, you know, there's associates, like I mentioned, and analysts. But if you're, you want to move at the right pace, you should probably go meet a partner because they can move quicker. It's, it, you know, if you think about all the noise that we all have in our days, right, 
again, if I meet a great entrepreneur that gets, I, I'll move, you know, we have a, a company here. It was started by two guys um, from Eastern Europe and we met them on a Thursday and we funded, we wired the money Monday. And that's, that's really quick, right? And then there's other deals that are like nine month slogs, right? So we'll talk about deal momentum, but it's about, so I'd say really think about who's the firm you want, how are you gonna get in, and who, uh, who at that organization you're gonna meet. Then we have these companies when you come in, and um, because most, on, most venture capitalists, like myself, um, we have attention deficit disorder, right? I mean, honestly, that's not, I'm not saying it's a good thing or bad thing, but many entrepreneurs like open the deck, they get to the deck and it's like 56 slides. <laughs> and, and I'm just like, oh my goodness, right? And th those are the meetings that just, it's, it, th I know in the first minute, there's no way I'm funding this company. Because if you can't tell your story in a few slides, eight or nine, right, it just, and that's what good, good entrepreneurs can simplify something that's really complex. And many of the technologies you guys are all in are complex, but you can simplify it. So don't bring 58 slides and don't bring five people. Because most venture firms, particularly if you're in an early stage, we're investing in the entrepreneur. We want to get to know that person. But if they have to introduce, here's my VP of marketing, and here's my VP of sales, and here's my VP of engineering, and here's my CTO, well, like, I, I want to get to know them in my due diligence, the team. But there's, there, there's the, the one, two, or three folks that are starting the company that are going to build the company. I mean, they, you need the whole team. And I'm not discounting the value of team, but I'm saying in that first meeting is you, you want to build a relationship. Um, and then um, the, uh, the Monday pitch. You guys, many of you may have raised venture. What happens is there's all this due diligence, and then the entrepreneurs come in for the partner pitch. And those meetings are very, for most firms, for our firm, they're very, very important, right? It, it, you know, I sometimes I think entrepreneurs come into us on a Monday and like, well, I've already met with Peter. This is a rubber stamp. This is, you know, I'll just give him the pitch. No, that meeting's really, really important for our firm. And I'd find out what's it, so, uh, and that's a whole, you know, I'll ch touch base on that in a second. But I, is this helpful? I, I don't want to bore you guys if this is not helpful. Okay, so the, just the deck real quick. By the way, I'd encourage you, like I, I saw an entrepreneur today and he didn't even have a deck. I loved it. This is a guy I want to back. He told me about himself. Because we, the, the, our firm, our style is backing people. So I want to know all about him, right? And my experience, I raised money from a firm right not too far from here, Greylock, an awesome firm. Um, and I was a first time entrepreneur. This was 1998. And I came in and I had, this is, you know, before you really kind of brought your, you, I had all the power, I went to, I was at Kinko's like all weekend, right? Had all these decks. I knew how many people were gonna be in the meeting. And I had them like nice color printed. It cost me like an arm and a leg. Um, and so I hand out, they have a coffee and all this stuff. They get this beautiful office. And I, um, I bring the deck and I hand out the deck to everybody. And I'm up there and I'm really ready to give the pitch. I got this thing nailed. And Dave Strom, who's still a partner at Greylock and just one of the best guys you'd ever meet, he says, Peter, can you start in high school and take us through today? And I was like, what, what? I'm, like what, what, what? I'm like looking in the deck where I didn't have that slide in the deck, right? That was the whole meeting. It never opened the deck. And they funded me. And they made a huge return. Right, I'm like, these guys wanted, they're backing people. In the early stage, we were a series A you know, company raising you know, $4 million. So I think, you, so, you know, it's have your deck, but tell your story. They wanna know who you are, who's on your team, what's the market you're going after, right? Um, they wanna know, tell me a little about your product. It might be, today it might even, you might not even have the product. It might be a vision, or you might already have. Maybe you've bootstrapped it. You've got to tell them about the product, tell them about the competitive landscape, and then tell them a little about your financial plan, right? And that you know, and that can be done in eight to ten slides in the first meeting. If it's too, it's you know, it, it's the old Mark Twain. 
right? I, wa I wanted to write you a short story, but I didn't have enough time, so I wrote you a long one, right? Because they want to say, how, what kind of thought did they put in? Um, um, in again, going back to what I said earlier, is I bring, don't bring 10 people to the meeting. Because then you want to give everyone time to talk, and then it's like, my best meetings are like, within like three to five minutes, I'm pretty much like, this is so interesting, right? You know, I'll spend hours with the company, or the opposite. This is so not interesting, I, I'm just dying to get out of the meeting, right? But you don't want to be rude, Right, and then there's follow-up involved, and then uh, VCs play go fetch with the entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Well, can you send me your customer list? You know, can I talk to management team references? And you know, you guys are busier than the VC, so just be careful with go fetch. Um, so I already talked. You can jump, uh, jump ahead. Um, so let me talk about the um, uh, the a little about the process. Is deals get momentum? If you're, if you're, I want, this is a venture, I'm giving you the venture pitch as opposed, there's millions of other ways to finance a company. So I'm just giving you, since I'm a venture capitalist, and that's what you know, we did, did together with Yuri, but is deals, you, know, you want to have a buzz. And I'm not talking about, um, I'm talking about um, buzz because your company is compelling. I'm not talking about um, hand-waving. I'm talking about because of the quality of you and your co-founder, where you came from, the size of the market, the fact that you've got this rock star development team, whatever it is, there's got to be some excitement in your company. Because going back to you don't want to give, you want to get the deal done in a relatively quick fashion, right? And you want to have minimal dilution, right? So you've got to get excitement. Investors, right, it's, it's the reason investors today are you know paying 50 billion? You, do you think the, the investors who are paying 50 billion now to get into Facebook are doing a discounted cash flow analysis to decide if they're going to invest? <laughs> you kidding me? They're begging. They're calling. You know, they well. No, no. If you're in the U.S., you can't get in. But if you're you know if you're living maybe in Finland, you can get in because only international people get it, right? They're calling their Goldman Sachs guy, begging to get in the deal because there's a, clearly a buzz, maybe the ultimate buzz. But that is uh, extremely important. So I'd say to get that buzz, you've got to be ready. And I was talking to a few entrepreneurs tonight, and sometimes you, you want to go when you're ready because it's very hard to go back, right? It's kind of like if you're an Olympic skier, you train for four years, right? And then you go do the downhill. And if you have a bad day that day, you can't tell the, hey, the, the judges, hey, can I go one more shot tomorrow? I missed the third turn, no. It's very hard to go back and say, you know, I really didn't tell the story well when I came in. Can I come back? Not impossible, but pretty hard. Pretty hard. And the venture folks, even though it's, you're, it's a private financing, it's not, you're not public companies, most deals, everyone knows about them. Right? They just, you know, I don't know exactly how, because it's not like we call up each other and say, did you see that guy today? It just kind of, you just kind of know. Like when, when uh, Yuri and Schmuel were raising money, you know, er, it was kind of the venture firms kind of knew what was going on. The pricing gets to be pretty efficient, not always you know, in terms of valuation. Um, so, you know, the, the terms are important, but if you go and raise venture, the terms are pretty much the same, not totally. Um, and and there's benefits to you know consider other sources because you have better terms, um, but uh, we can ch chat about the uh, the the, uh, the super angels in, in a second. And then the syndicate, you know, many right now many firms here, uh, many entrepreneurs are taking one-handed deals, right? Where they meaning they're just going to go with one venture firm, and we do a fair amount of those kind of deals. Um, traditionally, if you look historically, many you know it's been two firms. Um, you know, I have a bias, this is more from an entrepreneur perspective, I would have two. Because if one guy gets a little skittish because your product took a little longer to get out, sales didn't ramp as quick, it's kind of easier to say, hey, we're kind of done. It's a little bit harder if you've got another like-minded investor around the table. So, um, you know, there's, there's pros and cons to doing one firm versus two. Um, 
as my, my uh, uh, partner Paul Mader likes to say, uh, venture, uh, venture firms are like martinis. One's not enough, two's perfect, and three's too many. And I, I would say, you know, I have found that to be true in, in most of my deals. So I just have one or two more slides. So the due diligence process, get value out of that. In other words, you're trying to find the right partner. So let's just say that when, when uh, Yuri was, they were raising money, these guys providing a, a cloud management software for this sort of next-gen data center for the virtualized data center. Well, if we're going to be good partners, it means we got to make some customer intros. So they want to get their deal done. We want to do due diligence. So why not have us call new prospects that we can introduce them to? Where well, we're learning about their product market fit, but they're getting new prospects, right? So that's so even if we don't get there, we've hopefully it hasn't been a complete waste of their time because they maybe have gotten five or ten new prospects, right? Or we're vetting their uh, product as it might relate to partners that they might pursue. Right, so again, so I'd say as you go through the due diligence process, don't make it one way. Don't play, play go fetch, right? If the venture guy is worth his salt, he will then provide some intros that are valuable to you and your company. So I'd make it a two-way two street. Um, setting expectations. Today, if you're raising money, I might be on the other side of the table, right? So. If you come in and tell me, hey, I'm gonna grow my, you know, my revenue X and do all these great things, eventually you're back for the Series B financing. Right? So it's this, you wanna be exciting, tell the you know, tell the right story, but then we're actually on the same side of the table. Right? And it's kind of interesting, I haven't done the full analysis, but we've done about 75 Series A financings in the last five years. Right? So Series A's Right, that's the, that's the, that is the most fun financing, right? There's no operating history for many of the companies. It's, it's the dream, right? We're funding the dream, which is great. The Series B is, is sometimes the tough one. Well, the market took a little longer. <laughs> um, this product is gonna be awesome. It's just, it's not done yet. It, um, and oh, the sales cycles are just long, really long. Um, so we, you know, we, we're out of money a lot sooner than we thought. Um, we haven't hit the revenue we told you, right? Because every one of my partners has the Series A deck, right? You're back, eight, say it's 18 to 24 months. And I think the number of the 75 that have hit their Series A plan is like three. Now, that doesn't mean they're not awesome, become awesome companies, right? I mean, I was at EMC in year seven, we almost, we were, th we were taking the chips off the boards to make payroll. That was year seven. So, right, it's a journey. There's very few that are always up and to the right. But I just encourage you to set expectations right. Because if the venture folks have done a lot of deals, they know that companies take time to build. The ones that are experienced. So they're not looking, they're looking, do we trust these folks? Are they high quality? Are they relevant to their field? Are they hungry? Can they, are they gonna be recruit? That's my, always my big question. Would I go work for this person? Right, because that's the hardest thing. You guys know, recruiting is so hard. Particularly for great engineers, great developers. I don't care what part of the world you're in, you know? And I, don't, I know the economy is still challenging, but recruiting those people, so, um, so I'd say set expectations right, and don't forget that in most companies, they need more capital than they initially plan, right? So don't forget about the next uh, round. And maybe we can even chat later about how we structured our, you know, our investment. But anyway, that, hopefully, that's all I have in terms of just maybe getting some thoughts going in terms of the venture process. Um, you know, I'm for, if, uh, you know, if you guys have any questions or, or want to follow up on anything, it was more to sort of prompt the discussion a bit. Sure. Uh, I didn't quite get it uh, when you mentioned one or two partners uh, to, to fund. Now, whose call is that? I think it's the entrepreneur. For me, it's the entrepreneur's call because um, the, the entrepreneur, it's his or her company. Um, so if we want people with conviction, 
right? So if, if you say, hey, you know what, I really want to have one firm, here's why, you, some, you know, that doesn't mean it's right for every venture firm, right? But what some of hear, well, this, these guys like to do $5 million. I'm going to tell this guy I need $5 million. I get a second deck. So I have one deck that says I need $5 million. I've got another deck that says I need $2 million. And I got another deck that says I need eight. For, well, how much does your business need? Don't tell me what I want to hear, right? Tell me what you actually need to get to that next inflection point. Maybe it's to reach profitability. Maybe it's to get first customer ship. You know, maybe it's to get that big partner. So, um, and depending on the capital needs, right? If you know, many companies, it, you know, today are can be built much more cap, you know, in a much more capital efficient way. So maybe you only need one venture firm. But if you're going to build, you know, um, power plants, and you need hundreds of millions it's going to be a different syndicate. So I think it's really depending on the type of business uh, and what, what kind of partner you're looking for and what expertise you're looking for in the board. So you will never tell an entrepreneur, hey, I'm going to do that only if uh, my neighbor is going to join me? Uh, we don't, but I'm not saying venture firms don't, you know, don't say that. Um, we, 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 it's not kind of who we are. So that doesn't mean that's the right approach. I mean, it's just that, that's our approach, right? We're pretty much, what's worked out for us is being, you know, we back people going in, we back them going out, right? So, you know, if the entrepreneur says, I want to sell, I just had a company that was sold earlier, or six months ago. The entrepreneurs, ever, they went around the table and said, who wants to sell? There's three, two other venture firms. They all said, now it's time to sell. It was a very good return. I said, what do you, you, know, what do you guys want to do? Well, we got to think about it. I said, my vote, if I have it, my vote is not to sell. Because I love what you guys are doing, but you guys are at the helm. You, this is life-changing money for you guys. Ready to decide to sell, and we tried to say we'll help you then get the best price, right? So um, that's sort of our, our philosophy, um, and that served has served us well. Thank you. Thank you. So,